everyone, it's Patricia here from patriciafenty.com and today I have a super fun and super easy crochet tutorial for you on how to make these crocheted beaded bracelets. And I have two bracelets here. I have a pink one and a red one and they're wrapped seven times. And for me, this is a little bit big. This would be what I would call like the, the ladies large. I'll give you some sizes later on. But the difference that I, um, what I did with my bracelets is I actually included a button and a loop so that you can use them in different ways. If you just tie the ends together, then you can only wrap it so many times, say around your wrist or around your neck or around your ankle. And with the buttons, what this allows you to do is to wrap it, to use it as a choker on your neck and also to wrap it as an anklet. So you can use this in a number of different ways. So super fun, really, really great for, uh, for craft fairs, say, or to give your friends. It's easy, even, you know, young people could do this. And so I will be giving quite a bit of instruction here on different yarns and crochet hooks and beads and that sort of stuff. So if you want to just get straight to the tutorial on how to make this, you can go to this point here in the video. Otherwise, I'm going to go through a few different uh, basic uh, steps and instructions. And also, just before we get started, I discovered something at the end of all this video and I'll insert that right here now. Just for fun, I wrapped all the bracelets that I made. There's six here, six different sample sizes. They're all different lengths, so I can't actually button them up, but I just wrapped them around. Oh my gosh, isn't that fun? You could just, you could go wild with these things. I mean, wow. So yeah, if they were all the same length. Mine are all a little different lengths, but oh my gosh, just too much fun. Too much fun. Let's get started. So you want to use either a cotton thread or a nylon craft beading, um, uh, what do they call it, cording. I don't have any of that. I just have the cotton thread. And so cotton thread comes in a couple of different weights. This is a, a number three cotton thread and it's, it's a heavier thread. You can see this is a really, really funky uh, color. Uh, so you can choose any color you like. The number 10 threads are finer. And so I have some of those here. And any of these weights are good for the, the number six beads. But you can see those are, those are quite fine. And you need, you know, 10, 11 yards of each uh, to, to make one of these bracelets, necklaces, anklets. And then you'll need some number six beads, color of your choice. I just get these, um, we have a bead shop in town and also at the dollar store. I've picked some up at the thrift store, but you want the number six. And you don't really want to use any of these long tubes. If you have short tubes, those work. Basically any bead that you can thread onto your um, your thread will work. So uh, the one thing I found in experimenting was if the beads are too big, it doesn't really work because this is a fine crochet uh, thread and uh, the bigger beads don't work. So number six or anything you can thread onto your yarn. Now let's talk crochet hooks. So crochet hooks um, come in two different styles. There's the regular crochet hook that's used with, uh, you know, regular yarns like wool and, and acrylic and so forth. Then there's actually these steel crochet hooks, these old fashioned steel crochet hooks, and those are used specifically for crochet cotton to make uh, doilies and lace work and that sort of thing. The sizing of these are very different. So the, the regular crochet hooks, um, this here, this is a two millimeter, this is a two point two five millimeter and this is the old style the non ergonomic style and this is a two and a half millimeter the equivalent for all of these they call in us a b1 this is a b1 so with traditional crochet hooks it, it, the, the larger you go to two millimeter two and a half three the larger the crochet hook goes with steel hooks it's completely opposite so this here is called a number five and this number five hook is equal to 1.9 millimeter. A two millimeter would be a number four. So it actually goes in the opposite direction. So the smaller 
the crochet hook goes, the larger the number becomes. It's really weird. So if you run across these, in a, you'll probably find these in a thrift store. So you can use that. I like the ergonomic two millimeter, so it's totally up to you. And then a couple of more things. You're gonna need some uh, craft glue, just some white glue and some scissors, a cup, uh, a button of your choice to go with uh, the color selection. You want the button to be about 3 8 of an inch or that's like 10 or 11 millimeters. So just a, a small button. Then you're going to need a needle and that's gonna be a wee bit tricky because you need the eye to be big enough for the cotton thread to go through and the needle fine enough to get through um, the, the chain work, the stitching. So, you know, a chunky darning needle won't work. You need something that's kind of fine, but with a big enough eye for the, um, the cotton thread. Now, you can see here, there are several different styles and color combinations that you can do with this crocheted beadwork. And so this here, I've done uh, the beads with two chains in between in the cream yarn, multicolor beads, two chains in between with sort of brown tones. Here is three chains in between in the red tones. Here is four chains in between. And this was a really pretty variegated, uh, a variegated pink yarn. And so I wanted more of the chain to show with that. And these are all the number 10s. And then this is the number three. It's a little bit heavier. And this has three chains in between. It was a very colorful yarn. So I just used all gold beads. So the number of beads you require depends on how many chains you have in between. So this one here, this is a large. And the sizing for this, I would say roughly for seven wraps around the wrist. For a, a ch child size, you're looking at about 40 inches finished and finished is from uh, button to end of loop. And uh, a small medium woman's would be about 45 inches and a large woman's would be about 50 inches thereabouts. Also take note that the, the uh, thread will, the chains will stretch a bit after it's done. Uh, so this one here for a large and it was uh, 50 inches finished, I ended up using about 125, 130 beads on that. And uh, so, you know, you can just, if you want, just string on like 150 beads and then crochet until you get it to the length that you like. And of course we're stringing the beads on first. Now I'm going to do this in a purple variegated yarn or thread. This is a number 10 thread. So you wanna go ahead and string your beads on first. And so use your glue to create like a needle at the end of your thread. And I do uh, a coat of the, the glue, let it dry and do a second coat. And that gives you a nice strong end to thread your beads onto. And then I'm using just an assortment of purpley tones with a bit of gold and some white and I have a white metallic. Um, and when I was talking about the, the tube beads, these ones here, this one is sort of a square one, that, that'll work and this one works, but I wouldn't have them any longer than that. Um, so then once your end has dried, you're just gonna take your beads and thread them on just like that. And I've already gone ahead and, and done mine. So I have, I think I have 130 beads on here. Once you have your beads on, then we're going to start crocheting. Now I'm using the two millimeter crochet hook, the number 10 thread, and we're simply going to be making a chain stitch. So if you're new to crochet, I do recommend my beginner crochet series. I'll put a link to that below. It will be in the written pattern as well. And you may wanna just practice with a bigger yarn doing your chain stitches and practice with your tension so that you can be proficient with that. Working with a finer yarn is a little bit trickier. Now I've moved down, I'm gonna start further down because I'm in the dark purple here. That'll be hard for you to see. So I'm moving on down into the lighter purple. And so you're going to start with a slip knot. So 
So I have a particularly long tail here. You do want to leave a tail long enough to sew your button on at the end. So leave a tail probably, you know, I don't know, about 10 inches long. Put your hook or your loop on your hook. Set up your tension and we're going to start with a chain three. So yarn over, pull that through your loop. Yarn over, pull that through the loop. Yarn over and pull that through your loop. So again, I do recommend practicing with your uh, a larger thread, a yard, larger yarn so that you can be proficient. So you're gonna pull your beads up, have a few of them up close to your hook here. And so you're gonna pull the bead up under the hook. You're going to yarn over, hold on to the bead and pull your yarn through the loop on your hook and secure that bead. Then you're going to chain three, yarn over, pull that through, yarn over, pull that through, yarn over, pull that through. Now you may only wanna chain two in between. I'm chaining three. You might wanna chain four. You might even wanna chain five. It's totally up to you. So then you're gonna bring another bead up and you're gonna hold that in place and yarn over, holding your bead in place, pull that through the loop and lock the bead in. And then chain three, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And it is that easy. That's all you're going to do. I've already run out of yarn here. And you just keep pushing all your beads on down. Um, and here I've got a little square one that we're going to bring in, one of these little tube ones. Bring that up, hold your tension, hold that below the hook, yarn over, whoopsie. See how that got a little long on me and I just snugged it up. So you wanna keep your stitches nice and snug, but not too tight. And then pull that through and you lock that in place and then chain three. And that's how easy it is. So you can go ahead and do your chains and bringing your beads in, making this as long as you want. I'm going to make mine a total of, uh, yeah, so finish. So what you want to do is you want to allow an inch for the, for the, uh, the button and the loop. So I'm making this one as a women's large. So I'm going to make the whole strand 49 inches and note that when you measure it, you want to, um, you know, have a, measuring stick here. As you're measuring it, pull it um, and make it kind of tight because this will stretch. So you're wanting to measure it while, while you're stretching it out. So I'm going to go ahead and make mine 49 inches in length and then I'll come back and show you how to put the button on and how to make the loop. All right, so here I have my, my 49 inches. And again, when you're measuring it, you wanna pull the strand because it's, it's quite stretchy. So you wanna measure it at its stretched length. And uh, I have finished off with a chain three after the last bead. Now, unfortunately, I'm into the dark thread here. So I'm hoping that um, it'll, it'll show up okay on the camera. So once you're at the length, minus an inch, so this is gonna finish at 50 inches, um, the extra inches to put the button and the loop on. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the button on and then you know, you'll know you know what size to make the loop. So we'll do that first. So if you still have your glued end here, you can use that to put the button on to start. So if you have a two hold button, we're gonna thread through it twice. So you're gonna bring, oopsie, we don't need the crochet hook at this point. You're going to bring it through. Um, this is your beginning tail. So bring the, the yarn through there and then back down. If you had a four hole bead, um, we're gonna come back up and we're gonna do a second loop through here. If you had a four hole bead, then you could do the second loop going the crossways. So th threaded it on there and then this, I'm gonna cut a smaller tail here actually, because this is a little too long. So this is where you're gonna work with your needle. Now this needle is really long, um, but it's the only one that will <laughs> thread the, the yarn and go through the stitches here. So what you wanna do 
is you're going to sew down through these chains. This is a little tricky to show, but you can say go down through that stitch. And oops, pull that through. I'm making that like a knot. That's okay though. And then you can come back, back up in through the next stitch. And basically you're just going to sew your way down the chain stitch here. Just like that. And then you're going to turn around and stitch your way back up. Just come back up. Now this is probably like way stronger than it needs to be. <laughs> um, and then you can come through there and come from the bottom and then back around through the top. And then what I like to do is do a couple of wraps of the thread around the bottom of the, bee, uh, the button. And then you're just gonna come back down put the sew through again, pull it nice and snug. And at this point, you can put a knot in here. So we're just gonna come back in through the chain again and bring the needle through. You'll have a loop there. So I've already actually got one pass through. So I'm gonna come around from the back and do again. So that's like a little double square knot and snug that up. And, and then just darn in your tail end. And then, again, this is probably like way stronger than it needs to be, but there you go. And then I'm gonna come back in one more pass this way and then cut it off. And if you want, you can put a bit of fabric glue or white glue there. Um, it'll hold really, really well. So that is your button and all attached. Now on the end where you were crocheting, I have a chain three here, and I sure hope this is gonna show up okay, because as I say, I'm in the dark part. Now we're going to make a loop that's going to fit around the button. Now based on the size of that button, I know I'm going to need probably eight X chains. You'll have to, we're gonna custom fit it. You'll have to fit it yourself to see which is correct. So I'm gonna chain eight and you had the chain three. So what you're going to do is you're gonna count from your bead here, one, two, one, two, three chains. And into that third chain, you're gonna put your hook into that chain and pick up two loops of that, those stitches of that, of that chain stitch. So put the hook under, and you're just going to do a slip stitch. So yarn over, pull the yarn through those two loops of that chain. And again, this isn't showing very well because the color is so dark, but I'm describing it. So pull it through those two loops of the chain and the loop on your hook. That is a slip stitch. There you go. Pull your yarn out there. And then what you can do is try it on the button. Here we go and that is a good fit. Now, you, so if your button's smaller, you may have to do seven chains. If it's bigger, you might have to do nine chains, but eight chains for this size is perfect. All right, so that's a good fit. So now you're going to go into the next stitch, the second stitch there of your chain three and pick up I have just one loop there. You know what, that's fine. One loop is fine. Yarn over, pull through that one loop and the one on your hook and then slip stitch into the third chain after your bead. There, going down towards the bead. I got two loops that time, yay. Yarn over, pull through those two loops and pull it through the loop on your hook and then do a yarn over and a chain one, and that'll be to fasten off. And then you can cut yourself a tail. This is super fussy to show. Pull that through. And so you've already got a knot here. 
So now all we're going to do is darn in this tail end. And you can do this, you know, as solid or as uh, simple as you like and use some glue. So I'm going to go down into this space where the bead is and go in like that and sort of snug that knot down. And then I'm just going to sew back in the same way that we did for the beginning one. And again, these colors are dark to see, but you know, you're just sewing back and forth into those stitches. There. And down through there. And we've already knotted this, so we don't have to do a knot. And then I'm going to come down just one more in there. And I'm going to cut that. Now, you can glue this if you like. I actually made one of these too long and I tried to shorten it and undo all this and it actually did not come undone very well at all. So there you have your loop and your button. And now you can wear this in all those different ways. Now let me just zoom out. Okay, here we go. So I put the red one on and these are both what I would call the ladies large. For me, it's a little bit too big. This was finished at 50, 50 inches. So then here, we just would wrap this around. Four, five, six, and seven. And then you can just button it up. And, and you know, of course, these can be as light or as tight as, or they can fit as loose or as tight as you want. Once you get it on, just sort of use your fingers there to even it out. And there you go. And so yeah, for me, it's a little bit loose. There's your button and it's that easy. So of course, wearing, uh, colors together. This would look really good probably with the brown one. And um, I'll insert here some uh, pictures. So here I'm wearing it as a necklace. And here I'm wearing it as a choker. Here I'm wearing it as an anklet. And then here we are back as a bracelet. So these are just super fun. As I say, quick and easy to make up, inexpensive too. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. And we'll see you next time.